Hi guys, today we are at the chocolate store and I'm showing you everything you need to know about how to dip and decorate strawberries and apples as well as my tips and tricks to make basic treats look advanced for your small business or just for fun, especially all the do's and don'ts as your recipe for success. There are many skills we are mastering in this video, so be sure to keep on watching! If you are getting started with candy making, you want to know what supplies you need. So my three essentials for success are white chocolate melts, oil-based candy coloring, and an infrared thermometer. I always use Chef Master to achieve red and black, and color mill for all the other shades. The thermometer is going to be your best friend because the chocolate should be no higher than 86 degrees for dipping. If you slightly overheat it, you will get something called elephant skin, which is when the chocolate starts to separate and has unappealing dimples and wrinkling in the chocolate, as well as white spots called chocolate bloom. You definitely should invest in this tool. It is around $20, but I promise you it is a worthwhile investment and will save you a lot of time and product. As far as chocolate, the number one question you guys always want to know is what type do I use and recommend? So I'm comparing the two most common. On the left, we have the Merkins brand and on the right is Wilton Candy Melts. As you can see, they are both chocolate melting wafers. The Wilton Candy Melts can be found in most craft stores and Walmarts. It's very similar to the Sweet Tooth Fairy brand. Now let's go over the proper melting method for these. First, you want to microwave for 30 seconds and give it a stir. If you notice, the Wilton candy melts didn't melt much after the first 30 seconds. After that, we are microwaving in 10 second intervals until everything is completely melted. As I'm stirring, the Wilton has a gooey consistency about it. Definitely needs another round of 10 seconds to get rid of all the clumps. The final result is more gloppy and not very smooth for dipping. Let's go ahead and test the Merkins using the same method. It had a lot more melting activity after the first 30 seconds and was completely done once we heated it for just 10 more seconds. Overall, the quality is more creamy and smooth. I always use Merkins for that reason. The basic skill I'm showing you here is how to dip your strawberries. It is important that you wash and dry them right before you are ready to dip. Don't let them sit for too long or they will get mushy and they need to be at room temperature. If you dip a cold berry into warm chocolate, that will cause a temperature shock. Another tip to making the dipping process a lot easier is to insert a toothpick into the center of the berries. Push as far as you can go without going through the other side. And now that we have all of our berries ready to dip, transfer your chocolate into a mug and check that it's fluid and falls right off of your spoon or spatula. All you need to do is pinch back all the leaves and shake your mug to settle the chocolate, then dip straight in for a few seconds and pull right out. Make sure you shake the berry around to remove the excess chocolate and wipe the back of the berry so it doesn't pull up on the parchment paper. A fun way to decorate the berries is to apply glitter. Disco dust and techno glitter give the most intense look, but unfortunately they are not considered completely edible, only non-toxic. It's mainly aesthetic, so make sure you ask your customers if they would like another option, which I will show you later on in the video. Right after I dip the berry and the chocolate is still wet, I apply a generous amount with a shaker and you have a beautiful gold glittery berry. For the red glitter berry, I will demonstrate how I make red chocolate for the base. I'm using the Red Chef Master because it is more affordable than Color Mill and you need a lot of product when you are mixing a red or black color. I add in a little at a time until I reach my desired shade, which takes a little bit of patience, but you will love how the oil coloring makes your chocolate even more fluid and easy to dip. I don't recommend using any of the colored chocolate from the store unless you are adding more oil coloring to doctor it up since it's very clumpy on its own. Oil-based candy coloring never disappoints. 
I purchased all my glitter from a local cake supply store, but I will be sure to link some similar options in the description box below. This berry definitely reminds me of Dorothy's ruby red slippers. Another common question is how to melt black chocolate. Here I started by melting Merkin's dark chocolate melts for the base. Since this is a bigger batch, it has a thicker consistency. But once you add in the Black Chef Master, it loosens it right up. If you were ever having a bad chocolate day and no matter what you do, it's clumpy, it could be that the chocolate is stale and you could fix that by adding in some oil-based coloring to make the consistency on point just like it is here. I mentioned that I use the color mill for all the other colors, especially the ones that are more unique like this Tiffany blue. It is slightly more expensive and needs to be ordered online, but it is worth it. If it weren't so pricey, I'd use it all the time. For this design, I'm pairing the Tiffany blue with an icy blue techno glitter. It's the perfect inspiration for a frozen theme party, winter wonderland, or breakfast at Tiffany's. The camera doesn't do this glitter justice at all. You really need to see it in person. The other option that is more affordable for that sparkly look is to choose a sanding sugar. It's also edible, which is a plus. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison of how they look. If you have ever heard of Wilton candy colors, I colored the chocolate purple with it since I did not have purple color mill on hand, but I wasn't really a fan of how it dried. And guys, I know a lot of you are new to watching my channel, so if you are enjoying so far, make sure you join the party and subscribe for new videos every week. I just covered this purple berry with sanding sugar and also I'm dipping a plain one and setting that aside to dry. Later on I'm transforming it into a holographic berry, you definitely don't want to miss that. One of my favorite looks is the metallic gold berry. To get the best result, I'm mixing a gold luster dust with some spoonfuls of Everclear vodka. Many do this technique with lemon extract as well, but from experience, the paint is stronger with the Everclear, so let's use that. The consistency should not be too liquidy when you paint the berry, and a little goes a long way, but feel free to go over it as many times as needed to completely cover everything and make it as opaque as possible. I also created a rose gold version of this by dipping my berry in a pink colored chocolate using the color mill and the shade candy. For any type of gold detailing, I dip my berries in a color that matches it as much as possible because any milk or dark chocolate dulls the shine of the luster and we don't want that. Just like we did before, I mixed a rose gold luster dust with the Everclear and it looks absolutely fabulous over the pink. For a moment, I'm going to give you a break from all the fancy looks and show you a classic one. First, I dipped the berry into white chocolate and let it dry until completely set. Then dipped it into some milk chocolate on its side like a diagonal. And I'm sure you want to see a drizzle demo too. The best bags for drizzling are these lightweight piping bags. They are thinner and have a texturing to them which allows you to get a better pressure on the bag. Just snip a tiny triangle off the corner and the two-tone drizzle is definitely trending too. So I sprinkled some gold disc dust and blue techno glitter onto each half while the drizzle was wet and gently brushed off the excess after it has completely dried. Another trending design is marble of course. All I did was squeeze the chocolate out of a piping bag by zigzagging up and down and back and forth using two colors to make a colorful swirl and once you dunk the berry straight in, give it a nice twist. I recommend using colors that are on the darker side for this. I did show the marbling method with the lighter colors and it blends a bit into the white. Last but not least is the holographic berry. I'm taking a metallic airbrush coloring with a hologram glitter.
Start by brushing on some of the airbrush color to coat the surface. And after that, you could go in with the hologram glitter a little at a time. Then repeat by applying more coats of the airbrush color and the glitter until it is coated to your liking. The technique for adding sparkles to our chocolate dipped apples is a bit different so that they stick on properly. You will want to watch this next segment to achieve that. First things first, you don't need to boil the apples beforehand like you would do with candy apples. Just simply wash and dry them thoroughly and insert the sticks. I have a tutorial on making candy apples. If you would like to see that, click the i card on the top right. I also wipe around the top area in case there was any juice that escaped when we popped in our sticks. Again, I can't stress enough that the chocolate is at 86 degrees and I angle my dipping container, swirling the apple once, then make another pass around twice to coat the apple really well while it is still in the chocolate and shake it off. For this white apple, I'm painting the metallic gold paint the same way as we did with the strawberry. The best part about the chocolate apples is they last so much longer than candy apples. The shelf life of those are really short and the colors start breaking down in hours, especially airbrush colors. Since you watched me make red chocolate earlier, you will be a pro by now and ready for the ruby red apple, except that adding the sparkles is a little different when it comes to apples. A no fail gadget that you need is this dab and hold. It's basically an edible adhesive that I brush on once the apple is set. Be as thorough as possible to ensure that the glitter sticks everywhere. This method is so much better than sprinkling the glitter onto a wet chocolate apple because a lot of glitter can disturb the chocolate and make the apple appear bumpy, but with dab and hold, we don't have that problem. I don't know about you, but I can't get enough of these glittery apples. I had to create them in the Tiffany blue and a dramatic black as well. Just don't forget your dab and hold. I saved a super cool one for last, the cotton candy apple. I was inspired to make this when I saw the cotton candy flavored sanding sugar in the store. It smells so amazing and I have a link so you can get your hands on this to try it out. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. Give it a thumbs up and share to other candy makers out there. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.